So we'll call to order our meeting at 7.03 p.m. Um, the first item of business on our agenda today is uh, public comment, if there is any. I know we have observer. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and there's still no one on the, uh, the WebEx fan? Perfect. All right. Moving on. Um, next, we will be approving the minutes from our October meeting. So if everyone should have that in their packet, if you take a minute to just review the notes uh, for the minutes, rather. And if there are any amendments, please let me know. Any adjustments to the uh, the minutes? Do we have a motion to approve? Okay. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. All right. It is moved that we and seconded that we approve our meet our minutes for the October meeting. Are you ready for the question? All in favor? It is unanimous, so they are approved. All right. <clears throat> Moving forward, I will keep this brief. My chairman's report. Uh, it has been, thankfully, a more quiet <laughs> month for us. Um, I do want to just, you know, even in times of strife, in times of quietude, I do want to you know, continue to thank our staff for their continued uh, engagement and, and everything they do. Uh, obviously, hopefully there's a little calmer for you guys as well. But uh, other than that, that's really all I wanted to, uh, to make sure to say is that your support, your 
action has been extremely appreciated throughout and continues to be. Next, I will hand it over to Scott for our library updates. So here are some highlights from November. Children's staff held Sing and Stop at the gazebo on the green, which was incredibly popular, um, like hundreds uh, of people participating. Uh, teen staff hosted a mystery night. Uh, 54 teens had a fantastic time in the library after hours solving a mystery using library resources. Adult programming in October included a puzzle swap, a recycling program, ghost hunting, and pollination. Uh, Press Reader, which is a digital tool that the library launched a few months ago, uh, provides newspaper and, and newspapers and magazine articles from across the world, and 5,149 articles have opened since its launch. The library hosted a town press conference around charter revisions. Uh, we also hosted tables for our, the Friends of the Library, for Friends of the Library Week, and the Health Department, who gave out free radon kits. Uh, several staff members presented at the New England Library Association annual conference in Manchester, New Hampshire. The IT department is pleased to have deployed all the new desktop computers for staff and patrons. Uh, work eight work orders at there were eight work orders at Maine, and seven of those are closed. The remaining one has to do with the side door, uh, which is still not closing. That part is hopefully coming soon. There were five work orders for Woods. Four remain open, but I think more have closed since I wrote this. Uh, most are related to the bathroom, as most work orders are. Uh, and again, entryways continue to be an issue at Maine. We did get a quote from uh, the door guy, uh, the door professional, <laughs> um, and we will be presenting that to the town for possible capital outlay in the next two years. Um, Instagram continues to be our most engaged social media presence. Um, We've reached about 267 with a reach of 267% in the last 30 days. Uh, 57 new follower, followers, 19 posts, 42 stories, and seven reels. Um, the library did have three incidents in November. Uh, one was a possible theft here at the main library, and two were related to teens using the bathroom outside the memorial room inappropriately. Uh, that bathroom will be locked in the evening for some time, and there is a sign saying there is a camera on this door. Um, so we've, we're on top of it. We're, we're taking care of it. Uh, town librarian, I'm talking about myself in the second person. <laughs> uh, third person uh, I presented, I was present at the Fairfield Cares meeting, 1019, and I think it's important to note because I think that is an important group for this community. And I also got to be a costume judge for the Halloween on the Green for October 30th, uh. and was in several photos with high ranking elected officials dressed as a taco. Um, <laughs> Scott, thank you for thank you for attending all those different events. I know it's on the weekends and I do we do appreciate it here. You know, your presence out in the community. Thanks. As a taco. <laughs> Everybody loves as, a taco. However yes. you however you are presenting that day. <laughs> um, and then one last note, COVID actually in November was probably one of our worst months in terms of staffing. So we I mean October, yes. Um, it, it was uh, it, it was a pretty tough month, and I just want to give you know note to the staff. We had to pick up a lot of work because we just didn't have enough people in the buildings. We kept the buildings open. We got we kept we kept books traveling between the branches. It was just it was definitely probably the hardest month in a while. To stay. That's it. Oh, Jan, you're going to give us future stuff to be excited about? Uh, well, I gave everyone a calendar. We have a lot of programs going on in November. It's International Board Games Month. Um, the teen librarians doing a lot with that. We have board games for circulation at Woods, and uh, there's special events going on there, right? Displays and who can you take home a board game to get popcorn? Popcorn. Um, we had a couple of program, very successful programs already this month, and um, we have the Hamilton program tomorrow, which with the ever popular Gil Harold, that'll be a um, good crowd for that as well. Uh, children's is moving along. Uh, we do have the pause to read program, which I know, um, Peter, you were interested in that. They 
the um, children read to a therapy dog uh, that comes in once a month on uh, Saturday, both locations. Is it once your location and once here? Yeah, I think, yeah, alternating, I think it is. Um, and two new, three new staff members and children's one full time and two part time, which is sorely needed. So that's really good. And um, I'll let Donna talk about the friends. And that's it. Black going on. Great. You want to talk Q1 um, performance? Sure. So the following is an analysis. Analysis of the first quarter of the fiscal year, so July, August, September. As programming returned to in-person, the library saw a marked increase in overall participation. Uh, library circulation continues to trend upward, and at, but has begun to soften as expected since it saw such robust growth in the last year. In-person visits are up, um, and an increase in visits per hour while circulation is softening kind of indicates um, well, one, an increase in visits per hour indicates the expanded schedule is attracting additional patrons. So, in other words, by expanding our hours, we're not taking people from other hours, but it's just bringing more people in the building, which is always something you need to watch. Um, and also, considering that the circulation numbers are, again, they're growing, but it's softening, but we're seeing uh, increased traffic. It really is an indication that many patrons are returning for non-transactional services like study rooms, programs, and technology. So that, that's really something to be excited about. And then at the end of the report is, of course, connecting it all to our strategic plan. All programs in the previous quarter met, met one or more goals of the strategic plan. And the report demonstrates the library initiated several programs or services to align with that plan. So we're really, our staff have done a fantastic job, and I think, before I came on, uh, Nancy and Jan did a really fantastic job of getting the staff excited to make sure to follow the strategic plan um, and look at all the goals. And I think that's really indicated in this report. And when you put the program into place, are you thinking at that point what goal it is associated with? Yeah. Especially children's. Yeah. Um, every month I, when I get the report from children's, Camera will actually indicate okay. this meets this goal, and yep. the, you know. So yes, it's definitely in their planning. Mm -hmm. It's it's in the back of their mind. Okay. This so, is great, Scott. Yeah, overall, it was a good quarter. Yeah, this is fantastic. The only numbers I would like to see for a little bit more visits because that's probably the one metric that's not close to pre-pandemic levels, circulation's pretty much there, which is weird because circulation for years nationally was dropping mm -hmm. 10, 20%. So we are still a very, I'm looking forward to see how we compare to other libraries across the state after the state report's done because uh, we are one of the higher circulating per capita libraries in the state. So I wanna see if we're still there and I think we will be because the numbers are pretty robust. For visits, um, what's the split? You know, we, I, I see the the visits, or rather the circulation stuff, the splits. But when we talk visits, it's maybe Nancy. <clears throat> how is Woods trending versus, say, Maine? I would say Woods is. I mean, like seeing the graph in my head, I would say Woods is probably around thirty five percent of the visits to Maine. So if we were to split the if we were to split the visits by the library, maybe a little bit more than that. 75, 25 or 730? I would say 70, 30, okay. maybe a little bit higher, more like 65, 35. And I can definitely look that up. We and, should have done that graph. And are the visits trends? The the tra is the trend similar for Woods? Is it as Woods as actually is seeing a little bit more growth okay. than um than me. Um, I think the big um, the big reason why the numbers drop so low at Woods is the drop in teen traffic, and that's seen growth over time. And now with school back, you're going to start to see that grow more. Gotcha. 
And programming follows probably the same 65, 35. The majority yeah. of the programming happens here yeah. as yeah. opposed to the smaller facility over there. Yeah, we have the space here. Yeah. That's long been our rule of thumb, kind of one third at Woods and yeah. two thirds here for yeah. most things. What's interesting yeah. is that Woods, the trend last time I looked was they had a higher, if you split the door count by following the counter for the children's room, their children's room trended over 50%. So more than half the traffic. We're about here. I would say it's about forty percent of the traffic. So okay. Yeah, we've also increased our story times there. So that's yeah. Hey Scott, when you get the state numbers, is there a way that we can look at comparisons? Oh, absolutely. Okay, okay. absolutely. So like the state. See, I'd like to see what other trends are happening. Library is actually used, um, almost like a dashboard, that you can actually do comparison numbers. That's awesome. So yeah, it's one thing I really really. It doesn't, and other states that I've been in, you kind of do the report that goes into the ether. Um, whereas with Connecticut, they actually have, or they did last time we looked, had something where we can sit down and manipulate the numbers. Oh, that's excellent. Which is cool. That's that's a more is that like, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying yeah. it's a little more transparent because I'd, I'd love to see the ranking of that, how how we compare. When do we, when do, when do they usually do? They come out with a preliminary report. We just submitted the our report last week. Mm -hmm. So I would say maybe like in a month or two huh. it might come out with something. Okay. okay. And it'll be interesting because we did provide more services earlier on than a lot of libraries. I'm also curious to see how we, we do in that regard. I just want to say that one of the questions in the state reports and the question they started last year with to uh, talk about something that your library is proud of for the year. Uh, so Scott's answer to that was responding to the community's need for more study rooms. <laughs> and so we sent pictures and charts of the uh, sign up, which well, was like nearly full. Yeah. And I, I just randomly picked a day. Yeah. For the sign <laughs> sure. <laughs> 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 like, what <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, that, is, that is fantastic. I love and I really do like the structure of this. This report, um, and then, you know. I think it's good to know just as. As a rule of thumb, like how it's how these match up to our, uh, our strategic plan. So I appreciate this. This is great. Great stuff. Thank you. Awesome. And then uh, finally, bit of library updates, the financial and budget report. We're on trend. We spent first quarter we do. We're just starting to work on the next quarter, the next quarterly audit for the town. Um, really, the only place that we saw anything that Jan was concerned about, and I think it's okay, was we were 26%. We are at 26 for part time hours, um, which is a little high, um, but because it's summer, I think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Jan, any insight? We've discussed this that way, so. Okay. Good to know. All right. Now, as our next item of business, um, we will be doing a review of our, our policy review, monthly policy review, review, ugh, review uh, which we'll be looking at our current cell phone policy. Scott, do you want to give some uh, just voiceover there, around? There's not much. I mean, it's exactly what you would think it would be. Um, after discussing this with um, some staff, I actually would make the suggestion of removing this policy and incorporating some of the language into the behavior policy. Um, I think it's it's a trend for libraries when new things popped up to write policy around it. However, it's almost like the bag policy. It's almost like this weird one paragraph that hangs out there when it really could just be aligned in the behavior policy saying, don't be disruptive with electronic devices. So, you know, it's a little one that's out there that we'd like to kind of fold into a bigger. Okay, so I think what, we'll, what we can do with that is. Let's um, put, we'll put the, the behavior policy on our agenda for next month. Um, you know, everyone will keep this in place for the time being, and then we'll review both in the next meeting and we can. Since we will have it in front of us, I'd rather do it with uh, with that, you know, at hand. 
Uh, I don't see any immediate need to change this. This stage, unless anybody disagrees. So, what we'll do is for our December meeting, we will review the policy and then. If, I don't know if you want to bring. Uh, proposed language, yep. and we will review the behavior policy and cell phone policy. And if we find that it covers sufficiently, we can remove the cell phone policy at that point. All right. Now, moving into our committee and liaison reports, uh, Chris is not here. Jan, is there anything you'd like to share with regards to space planning? I know you and I discussed um, the no. estimate. I don't know if you had a chance to talk to Chris at all with that. No, about okay. the study care off? Yeah. The next, yeah, okay. Uh, no, I mean, I didn't. Okay. Back, but um, no, it's, I'm, Chris, Chris is the chair. Um, <laughs> I was just say <laughs> that um, the next phase involves the uh, periodicals room and mm -hmm. What we had thought about before was a long time ago, and so we're just reevaluating that all together and uh, we're going to make another visit to the showroom to see what kinds of things are. Available now. Uh, so, it'll be a while before we come forward with the proposal for that. Okay. Uh, Good to know. Money. Yeah, and I'll keep I'll keep close with Chris on that. And I suspect that it possibly could go up the. Bill would need to be paid in the next fiscal year. Yeah. Go that. yeah, that that's based on supply chain and everything. Yeah, I would imagine so. Same All right. Case. Um, the next two are very intertwined, but I'll start with uh, Peter updating the uh, fundraising yeah. committee. Last week, uh, we met with uh, Donna Cahill and uh, Scott. Danielle Shaw. Danielle Shaw. Uh, to discuss uh, fundraising, creating an ancillary fundraising program to the friends. It was a very positive meeting. Uh, clearly, they're supportive of the idea of us going out after the foundation, uh, <coughs> foundations for possible uh, support of the library. Interestingly, what came out was that given the fact that they're the 501c3, which we're not, uh, that they would be the fiscal agent for any grants that we would be able to get. Uh, Andy and I and Scott don't see any problem with that at all. In fact, if anything is preferable. Uh, so now the next step will be that uh, we should investigate uh, if uh, staff could do this, contact the Foundation Center in New York, the web. And I would take a one month subscription, which probably cost $150 for us to sit down and start to uh, take a look at what uh, foundations are here in Connecticut or also, maybe Upper Westchester County uh, Family Foundations and start to uh, submit some grant proposals to see what kind of bike we get out. So, it was a very good meeting. I think, uh, Jan, you were there. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, we're on our way, at least partially. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, one other just to put some color around it. Um, one of the other outcroppings of that is just to make sure that because the the friends with the way that they are um, doing their fundraising, and their expenditures <clears throat> for the library is it's very <clears throat> it's extremely purpose driven. So whereas ours are broader, um, let's just continue. Time it wouldn't have been the Wi Fi. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it's just to make sure that that our board of trustees, the friends, are in close communication in terms of the goals of both the friends as well as the board, um, that our efforts, and those, there are, theirs are very specific purpose driven, 
um, that it aligns with our strategic plan. So I think it's not that we've been far afield of that, just a reminder, especially as Don has come on, I've come on as uh, in the leadership roles, that we're all on the same page. So. Right. I mean, and the friend's mission is to support program at the library, fundamentally, things that we can't cover in the regular budget. And so everybody knows we always have, we have two standing events, maybe three standing events that we've done. One is the mini golf that really uh, targets children. And that's a program where we can love dads which is fake. It's on a Saturday or Sunday morning. It's after church. You know, <laughs> it's like a good thing. Mom says, you go to a mini golf. We're going to go out and do this. So that's been a pretty solid fundraiser for us. And we're tentatively uh, doing that. I think it was like March 19th. That's going to go on the calendar. The second one that we've done for the last you know, five years, what we had canceled, but it was food truck festival. Mm -hmm. um, this was the first year we had a weather speed bump. So. Mm -hmm. As you would imagine, weather was very contingent on having big turnout. We had a good turnout based on on mm -hmm. what was happening, how cold and windy it was, but we didn't raise as much money as we had in the past. What we'll do this at this um, meeting we have coming up next week is we ask the library. So we try to um, let people know specifically what money we raise goes to purchase. We really want to close that loop between when you support our program, here's what it's getting. It's not going in a black hole. We have signage like the laptops that we bought a few years ago. There's a sticker, you know, mm -hmm. thanks to the friends of the Fairfield Public Library. So we think it's really important for anyone who wants to give money to us to have it satisfy that checkbox on the kinds of things they're interested in doing. So um, we gave the budget number last month to the guys at the library and we've asked them to come up with some things that we could use that are ancillary to things so that we can do that. Um, the third sort of standing fundraiser is the uh, literary luncheon, which happens every May. So we're currently prospecting authors. We have a couple good ones on the line for that. We've historically done that at the Patterson Club. So that's been uh, something that's been useful for there. Um, more recently, things that have happened, we had Halloween on the green. Uh, Danielle and I spent the afternoon there with Scott. We had a friend's table. We handed lots of uh, membership cards out to people. So we're hoping we get a lot of sign up from that. Right. We've heard great, great feedback about the library, the table that the library had, the activities. I mean, it was when packed, it was really it. packed. They did a great job. So we, in the community, people are really happy with what's happening with the library. Um, many of you also know we have the art gallery. We have changed the art gallery structure. We now have a, a curator or a, a count or a director, a gallery director, I guess we're calling her. It's a paid stipend position uh, that's coming out of the budget for the friends. So uh, there will be four big uh, art shows a year. The one for this fiscal opened up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's two abstract artists. The gallery opening, we had over 65 people the first night. We usually used to have wine and snacks, and both of the artists gave a little speech about who they were, what they were, how they get into art, why they do what they do, and answered any questions. It was, it was really fabulous. The art down there, if you haven't had a chance to stop in, it's, it's, really, it's really great. We get a percentage of anything that sells. And that's all considered a, a donation, a nonprofit donation. So it's a tax write off to anyone who buys it. The next gallery uh, that we'll be doing, the next um, uh, collection is going to be a community art show. So in a community art show, we let anybody, I think it's anybody who wants to, <laughs> the first 65 people who bring their art back to the committee um, can get can get in there. I don't know what their screening process is. <laughs> I, I, I think there's some sort of, um, you know, review yes. for, for accessibility for making sure it's okay. Um, but, but that's going to start in, I think, December, right? I think that it was December or maybe the beginning of the year. And I think that's usually a really great, it's, Lots of people from colleges, high schools, artists, maybe people we have reached out, maybe a few more amateurs, and it really brings a different group of people into the library mm -hmm. and exposes another piece of the process for it. We're we're trying to figure out how to use art books, you know, link some of these other community things together and add some additional programming around the gallery. Um, Jen Butler, who most of you know, she and her husband helped do the Food Truck Festival. She does a, uh, she's a clothing designer and she twice a year does a spring and fall show and uh, the door feed for the show, she donates directly to the library. Mm -hmm. So she gave a nice chunk of money last month from her fall show that's going to go and support the teen room. That's really a passion for Jen, is that sure. teen room and that teen space. Um, we are hoping to, to participate in Giving Day. So the Fairfield County Foundation Fund has a giving day that it's done and it sort of coordinates advertising for it. Um, you, it's a link that we can send out to people. You click through it and it goes through a payment system. There's a little bit of a hiccup with it this year. They're asking for um, a personal social security number. 
to verify a representative to do the payments. And they're saying it's because Stripe is doing that. Which so so we're Maybe sort of being just Stripe. <laughs> well, we don't have a choice. No, 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 no. We're talking. So it's it's, it's, it's it's a KYC, right? Because they want to make sure it's not money laundering. Mm -hmm. So it's a federal requirement that didn't exist mm -hmm. in the past. So we're trying to see if somebody on the board wants to give their social security number out, right? We're all volunteers, so it's a little like it's a little dicey. So we're trying yeah. to figure out why we can't just have yeah, um, the, the library will be the conversation twenty five and a list of who the if you need a library are, card or you special verify that I'm an officer who has an officer circulation that, that way. Now. So it's a Just little bit. So we're kind of doing that. We would like to just give you forty six. We raised seven thousand dollars every time we've done it, and I hate to have to like have someone's concerned about personal information. Yeah. Cut that down for us. Um, so that's. Uh, let's see anything else. Our next meeting is next week. So um, we are looking to add a little more structure to the friends. In the past, we've had lots of members at large. Um, uh, we have many new board members who are looking to get more actively involved in the things we do. So we're going to be working on coming up with some um, more concrete roles for people via committee. So one might be community outreach. You know, we talk about all the new businesses in town and uh, Danielle did a great author talk over the summer at one of the restaurants up on Fairfield Avenue. And we had like 65 people who are people that don't typically come into the library. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Isla's a new restaurant or someone else is a new restaurant. We're trying to see if we might be able to work with them and say, hey, can you give us a drink coupon and give us Thursday afternoon and let us have a space and do a little author talk. So we'll introduce you to our people. You can help us with a little bit of uh, sort of money off or something the service you can provide them. So I think that's going to be one we'll do. And I, I think we're going to look to add another fundraiser. Unclear what it is. We've kicked around a few ideas with the library so we can try to have one per quarter. Mm -hmm. you know, so it evens out if we have bad weather in the food truck, you know, we have something else that might offset it. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have. Today is the meeting? It's next Tuesday. Yeah, anybody's welcome to come anytime. Oh, I don't want to be remiss. We have a book sale coming up also, 18th to the 20th. So it's going to be here in the Rotary Room and also downstairs at the, at the Twice Red Room. You know, when you come yep. in, DVDs, books, all kinds of stuff there. So that's coming up as well. Great. Yeah. I know I'm not supposed to talk, but the foundation. No, so that's oh, you're not supposed to talk. <laughs> what? You know, I'm not on the board. Um, I know that Bridgeport Library. I don't know if they still have it, but they got a grant several years ago um, to provide um, a foundation resource. So I don't know if they. I know that they have databases and other things that was through a grant. So I don't know if you want it. It's at the main library downtown. Hmm. So before investing in a subscription to something, maybe just, I don't, whether or not they've kept it up, I don't know. I could find out, but um, I know in the main library and that's where it used to be the business section, they put in a whole resource there for, for that purpose for foundation. In honor of Anthony Ball, because he was something he passed away. Thank you. Well, I don't know if it's still there. You get to, you get to talk, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> have an idea like that. <laughs> I think I am. My goodness. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> All right, Aaron, the treasurer's report. Yes. So I have better news this month than I did last <laughs> month. Uh, with the market being up in October, um, the endowment funds, Memorial and Jennings, are both up about 4%. So compared to what I reported on um, about a month ago, we're up about $300,000 into those two endowed funds. Yeah. So the total at the end of October is just about 7.7 .7 million. Really all I have on the Vanguard accounts for today, First County Bank, um, I was hoping we didn't have yet another update on what we have to fill out, but we do. Uh, and unfortunately we need both Chris's signatures and Christina as secretary, so we're not going to be able to accomplish that today. But I believe we need to put on the agenda for next meeting um, approval of the corporate resolution. And that is more of so two things. The corporate resolution is just outdated at First County Bank. Okay. So we'll have to put that on the agenda for next meeting. So that just coincides with the timing of me put, being put on signer. But with me being put on as a signer, we also now need Chris's signature again and Scott's signature all on the same sheet of paper. Submit. Oh. We'll add that for next time. 
That's all I have for today. All righty. All right. So, uh, as we are nearing the end of our calendar year, this is our second to last meeting for the for the calendar year. I know time flies when you're having fun. Um, we have a proposed slate for next year's meeting uh, included in here. Want to just walk through this? Would continue to be the uh, the second Monday of every. Actually, the first Monday. First Monday. Scott. I'm sorry. The first. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's just we have <laughs> we've had so many anomalies. It does seem more often than not. There's also a change on the October date as well. Yep. Um, so just take a look through the. Does first Monday raise any issues with anybody moving forward? All right. I'm just looking. We will continue to uh, to not have our August meeting. Yes, just fine. I wouldn't get a quorum anyway. <laughs> um, actually, you're right. It is mostly the second week. Huh. Oh. you did the second week. We did do the second week. Then I. It's no, you know what it is? I did the first I week. Think, I changed talk. everything. I think they changed it to the first because the second one conflicted with other meetings and the second, and like, yeah, no, I know, I know what happened. Meetings in the same week or something. Yeah. So that's why it went to the first one. So it would be. Do it here. Honestly, it's it based on the number, like the, the dates that we have here. I don't see any issue with us not doing it on the second. Second Monday. No, Christina can't do it the second Monday. That's why. Ah. We originally aimed for that. So it would be January 2nd instead of the 9th. Mm -hmm. Then. January 2nd? No. <laughs> but it did come into question. Yeah. Yeah. It's a deserved holiday, I guess. So. What schools might be full? Oh, right when I think I had this all figured out. <laughs> I did not. So we'll do January 9th. Which would be the second. Wait, the second, 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 week. second Monday. Second oh. Monday. Okay. So then, uh, I really was proud of myself. That was a mistake. So then it would be February 6th. Six, March 6th. Six. Wait. Yeah. One, nine, two, six. March. Six. March 6th. Yep. April 3rd will stay consistent. April 3rd. We'll move it up to May 1st. May 1st. Yep. June. The reason why the June date was. Well, yeah, it's the second Monday. Okay, so 6 July will have to so keep. That would be, no, it would be June 5th. Yes. July will have to keep it as is. Seven ten. Which also Christina will no longer be a board member at that point. So. So then September. September. Eleven because of. Labor Day. Labor Day. Then it would be October second. Second. Yes, because the sixteenth is the third Monday. Because when is the holiday? Uh, ninth is Indigenous People's Day. The ninth. Yep. Okay. So then, November sixth, and then. I think this actually ends up December fourth. <clears throat> I think this actually ends up being a bit tidier. Actually, if we do first Monday. Yep. Scott, uh, I don't see an issue with Hanukkah. I thought when we talked on the phone. No. No. Is that, okay. No. Well, then we're good. Well, well, December 4th is the first Monday. We're still doing December 4th. Yeah, <laughs> December 4th. <laughs> and then, you know, if you want to bring gifts. <laughs> what night the, is that? The, the first what day night? is the 8th. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Yes. Yes. We're good. We're good. That, I know what happened. Add the 11th. 
this memo got written, it got saved, then got changed once <laughs> I talked to Christina, and I am still getting used to Microsoft Office as opposed to Google Docs, yes. and it did not get automatically saved, and then I did not check it before it got sent out. So, always good to plan it out. Always, always. <laughs> so, January 9th, February 6th, March 6th, April 3rd, May 1st, June 5th, July 10th, September 11th, October 2nd, November 6th, and December 4th. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. <laughs> um, I would say, do we want to? Does anybody want to make a motion to approve this as amended? Is there a second? Second. All right. <laughs> right. Anybody have any points they'd like to make about this? Fantastic. No one does. <laughs> so uh, there's the question. All those in favor of adopting this for our 2023 meeting schedule, say aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. All right. If you really want to have fun with calendars, go to a Fairfield Board of Education meeting when they have to set the calendar for the following year. Oh, wow. Take into account not only all the holidays, but when is the best time for winter session so that people can go ski? Yes. <laughs> oh, don't get me on the calendar right now. The kids have two days off this week, and I'm not thrilled about it. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow, election day, Veterans Day. Yeah. Well, kids also didn't get uh, Indigenous Peoples Day off, we and I did for work. Yeah. So, you would like to call better today, Daniel. Yeah. Well, so. um, all right. And then old business we discussed this in our previous meeting um, with regards to communication from the public to the board uh, is the idea of creating a board email that we will all have access to. Um, I think in terms of logistics around that, Scott, that is, I believe we discussed that something that we set up on the Fairfield <clears throat> through the Fairfield website. So yes. it'd be a fairfieldct.org yeah. web uh, email address, probably FPL Board of Trustees or something of, of that nature. And it would be, would, would you prefer the town um, network or the library? So the library has a separate, like my email is at FPL ct.org as opposed to fairfield.org well, which, which i'd would actually you prefer know? fplct With the owl, it there we go. It was probably a recording of me faint in the recording because I was using her laptop mic when that shut off. I don't know why that shut off, but oh, Chan, check the where it says <laughs> mute. There's a little arrow pointing down. Yeah, it's set to the. The owl. Yeah. Um, so it went offline for some reason. That's weird. Went back to. So for anybody watching in the future, we don't know what just happened. <laughs> Technical good. Yeah. Um, you missed nothing. <laughs> um, so, but with regards to the creation of the board email, we will create on the the library server 
the board of trustees at FPLCT.org. That is a, an opportunity for the public to reach out to board members. And is there a motion to create the email? I'll make a motion to create the FPL Board of Trustees email. Board of Trustees of FPL. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. You're welcome. Is there a second? Second. Later. Any further discussion needed around this? All right. All those in favor of establishing an email address for the Board of Trustees on the Fairfield Library server, vote yay. Aye. Opposed. One. All right. So moved. So will we put? Will we have that on the website? I'm just curious. How would yes. the public know that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. We can. I would imagine we can probably have it added to the officers page on the the town website as well okay. as a board email address. Because all of our names are on there, um, we'll have that added there as well. With that, that is all the items on our agenda. Is there anything else anybody would like to discuss? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Aaron, second. Anyone <laughs> second? I'll take a second. I'll second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. We adjourn at 7:50 p.m.